What's up guys, if you have been following my videos, you will know that I'm doing an iPhone 5S 30 day challenge where I use the iPhone 5S and report back with my experience. Today I will be talking about the web browsing experience on the iPhone 5S and how it fares to something like Android. Now before I begin, it seems that some of you have a problem that I'm using Google Chrome. Well, mainly the people that use an iPhone. And if that's the case, don't you think that's a little bit unfair that you are telling me what browser to use? The Chrome browser is the browser of my choice because this is the browser that syncs across all of my devices and I like it. So basically what you're saying is in order to use an iPhone, you have to use all of Apple services to get a good experience. Now, if that's the case, please leave your comment down below. But anyhow, let's begin. So for example, I have the same website loaded here. Now, if I begin to scroll on Android, I can scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, literally with just about one flick. And I'll do that right now. That's probably, and this is a really large page. That's almost halfway or about halfway. And I could just do that. And that's almost to the very bottom. I actually didn't think this page was that long. And there you go. Three flicks gets me to the bottom of the page. Basically, and I talked about this in my Wi-Fi performance test. If I give, you know, 25%, it shows 25%. If I give 80%, it shows 80%. And of course, if I give 100%, it shows 100%. Unlike, that actually doesn't happen with the iPhone. If I give 100% flick, you only get like 10%. If I give another 10% or 100%, I only get 10%. So imagine having to scroll to the bottom of the page. This is exactly what you have to do the whole entire time, okay, to get to the bottom of the page. To me, that is a terrible experience because sometimes I am... Sorry about that. Sometimes I am reading a website and that happens. I don't like that. So let's see what happens in Safari. Let's go ahead and try that again in Safari. Now this is Safari for you Safari lovers out there. Same thing. This is why, and I said this in my Wi-Fi performance says, why the iPhone seems like it has a great experience. And the reason being is because it doesn't load everything at once, unlike with Android over here, everything is loading all at once, so it has a lot more to do. With the iPhone, it's only giving you a little bit at a, at a time. That's why you see sometimes those checkerboard is because they're limiting what you can see. And that, to me, is not a really good experience. Okay, now let's move on to a different test. And let's look at how it performs on websites. Now, to be fair, I'm actually going to use a website from Apple because we can all agree that their website is probably the best optimized for the iPhone. Okay, so let's take a look at if I wanted to, for example, pitch to, pinch to zoom, scroll around. Yeah, what's this? Lag, right? Lag, lag, lag. A lot of lag. And that's been the experience. And this is actually a good website. If I show you some other ones, it's, it's terrible. Now I know what you're going to say. Armando, Chrome is no good on the iPhone. So here's that same website using Safari. And yes, it will be a lot smoother. It still lags a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at that. It, it's actually almost about the same. Maybe not as bad. I shouldn't say it's about the same, but it, it still lags, okay? And this is Safari. There it goes. It's pretty major lag there, okay? Like I said, it's not as bad as Google Chrome, but you could definitely see it right there. Like, okay? pretty as I do pinch to zoom look at that it, it just went berserk this is Safari for all those people saying why don't you use Safari okay it does the same thing on Safari maybe not as bad but the reason why I use Google Chrome is because I am able to share things with everybody so for example if I and it's a to me it's a better experience everything syncs across the board but let's say for example if I want to share with Google Plus oh wait I can't I can't share with Google Plus what a bummer so again this is about experience for those people that use a browser like Chrome will not have a great experience with the iPhone 5S. Now jumping back here to the, or excuse me, jumping back here to Google Google Chrome, I don't know if you guys, uh, here we go, I'll show you. If I share this, I can share this with Google Plus, I can do Gmail, I can do a lot more things on Google Chrome and that's why I prefer to use it. So once again, the iPhone 5S, Unless you're going to be using everything Apple, at least that's from my understanding that you guys are saying, I will not have a good experience. 
And even then, you saw in Safari, it was not that great. And this is kind of interesting, seeing this on the iPhone with a 64-bit processor and a company that prides himself in telling everybody that the user experience is the most amazing thing. So yeah, going back to my whole experience with the iPhone 5S, I can honestly say that Android has offered a much better experience web browsing, and it really doesn't matter what browser I use. As a matter of fact, there's actually even better browsers on Android than Chrome that I, again, I don't even use. Like for example, Naked Browser is a really good browser for Android, super fast, very fluid. Even Dolphin is probably among better than, or some will say it's better than Chrome, but I like to use Chrome and Chrome works really good on Android. Doesn't work that great on on, uh, Apple's uh, iPhone 5S and even Safari on their own Apple website still doesn't work. Now let's go ahead and try the same website on a Nexus 4 and see how it fares. Mind you, I'm going to get really large pinch to zoom, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and get from edge to edge. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean by that. So edge to edge, really fast. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, do the same thing I did with the iPhone 5S. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. As you can see, there is no lag and slow it down. So you guys can see, okay, there's no lag. Mind you, this, this phone has been out for over a year now. It does not have a Snapdragon 800 processor like the rumored Nexus 5. It doesn't even have a Snapdragon 600. So it's a little bit unfair compared to the iPhone 5S because that, that phone just came out. Something more fair would be to compare the iPhone 5S to the upcoming Nexus 5 because it's you know more up-to-date of Android device. But as you can see, even an older Android device, which in today's specs, it would be considered mid-range, the specs that are on the uh, Nexus 4 that is, it would be considered mid-range compared to some of the flagship Android devices out there. It handles it just fine without any hiccups. Web browsing is really good. And like I said before, the uh, or Google Chrome is not the best web browser on Android. There's definitely better browsers out there, but I like to use Google Chrome and it works just fine. So it looks like the iPhone 5S needs a little bit of project butter.